Alright, it is evening time for a stream here at the Sim Pit. So yesterday we were a little uh, unfortunate, let's say, with our uh, stream of iRacing in the rain. And it was just because we were so fresh off the, the new build and there were so many people doing it. The servers were really bogged down. It was hard to really uh, set the conditions we want. So here we are a day later and uh, luckily I want to thank, first of all, Andrew White for hosting this room. So we're at Daytona in the heavy rain as you can see and i am in a uh 
BMW. I think I picked the BMW for this ride. So uh, we will be able to really uh, get into driving in the rain here today. And, and in doing so, I don't know how many of you are going to deal with the rain. Uh, if that's something that you want to be doing, will you avoid it like the plague and I racing? Or are you going to really go at it? But uh, there are some things that you want to do differently. So uh, part of today is going to be phase two of driving in the rain, checking things out. This time in a GT3 car instead of an open wheeler. We were in Super Formula Lights yesterday. And that's part of it. And then the other part would be uh, uh, giving you guys a few tips on how to maybe be a little safer, I think is the best word. Not necessarily faster, but safer in the rain. So I'm going to give you some tips throughout this on things you can do to be a better rain driver slash racer. So uh, with that said, I, I need to grab my gloves. I left them over there. Let me grab my gloves real quick. I did throw that shout out and thank you. Oh, uh, that was the other. So we are in a hosted section and it was Andrew White who's nice enough to host our event here. And if you want to join us, you go to the hosted section on iRacing. You can look for it by Daytona. You can look for it by Andrew White, the host. And the password today is Simpit Fun. So if you want to join the track, us on track in a GT3 car at Daytona, you're more than welcome to get out here with us. And uh, we have 42 minutes left in the practice. And knowing uh, my ankle's a little sore, so that's probably about all I'll have in me today. But really, I want to show you. Tip number one, don't run in the rain, says Joa. Well, we can't avoid it. I mean, I did see a thing that said that it will be used in some of the... Uh, official sessions so i mean there are scenarios for people that they are going to have to run in the rain uh maybe their league is going to make them force it or maybe it's a, a hosted event they're joining uh shoot will hot lap hump day be in the rain one day i wonder i i have no influence in that and i'm not going to mention it or throw it out to them but i wouldn't be surprised knowing kevin ford that he doesn't throw it that at us real quickly so let me grab those gloves, and then we're going to get on out on track. If you want to join us, host in section Daytona GT3 is hosted by Andrew White. Password is Simpit Fun. I'll be back in half a second. All right, Andrew, you in your car? Yeah, I'm in my car. Well, hi, Maxwell. Did you want to do some rain driving? All right, look at how wet it is. <laughs> Oh, it's step on the gas and the rear end just moves immediately. I gotta remember I'm in the BMW. <laughs> Front engine, rear wheel drive. Bucho! Bucho, do you know that you were a topic of discussion in the Discord the other day? Everyone was asking, wow, we're hydroplaning just trying to get off pit lane. Did you see that? I couldn't even get enough traction to stay down low. I might even get a black flag. All right. So... Wow. Oh, no. Okay, wait. I'm guessing I have... I'm guessing I have the wrong tires. Tip two, if you're slow in the dry, you'll be slower in the rain. It ain't no equalizer for lack of racecraft. Yep, we're definitely going to need wet tires. Those were useless. Did you see that? We couldn't even get off pit lane. All right, you want to lead out? I want to see your rooster tail anyway. That sounded weird. Nothing, Bucho. No, it was just sort of, I think people were like, uh, 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 I didn't mean this. I, you're current, so I don't mean this in the wrong way, but, uh, People are kind of reminiscing, and so they're going through some uh, older, you know, like, hey, anybody, you know, remember Nick? You know, anyway, so people mentioned Bucho, but then others were like, no, Bucho's been around lately. Dry tires makes it more fun. It was damn near impossible. All right, I need some windshield wipers. So this is a step up, in my opinion, over the open wheel version. Because now I do have water 
but it's just sort of there. It's not really building up so much. We'll see what happens when I get in the rooster tail. All right, we avoided that puddle. All right, so when it comes to driving in the rain, like Joa said, it is not an equalizer for lack of racecraft. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Uh, it's, it's more treacherous, more difficult. Hey, Brian Ostrike, how you doing? Okay, you guys, this is this is kind of cool. <laughs> Andrew said it very wet. I asked him for very wet conditions. We have very wet conditions here. All right, so on the banking, this isn't going to be a big deal. In fact, there could even be scenarios where the banking wouldn't be wet enough to keep our wet tires protected. So a few things. Obviously, driving in the rain, sitting here in the rooster tail right behind the driver, it's going to be very hard to see where you're going and what you're doing. And it's going to be not only scary, but it's going to be dangerous. So when it comes to running in traffic, whoa, 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 that puddle got us. Got to slow down there. I definitely felt that puddle. So yesterday I wasn't feeling puddle hits and steering wheel force feedback. And now I definitely am. So yeah, when we're running behind, like right here, we get into that invisible point. Obviously, you can't run that much here. Now, if we we're in a big group, we might not have the freedom. But if we have the room, let's get out of that rooster. Let's get us a different view. He's taking inside. But even if he was on the outside, I don't mind going inside because we're in the rain. And I'm going to have to be thinking about the brakes a little bit earlier than normal anyway. And then the other thing you need to do is, oh, you need to be very mindful of puddles. Because puddles are the enemy. I made a mess of that under braking. So you're looking for those big puddles. Because anytime you hit a puddle, you're just going to hydroplane and your car is going to go straight. So you might find yourself driving well off the normal driving line just in a puddle avoidance scenario. The other key to driving, I'm just going to go through them. These aren't in any kind of order. They're just sort of as they occur to me. But you're going to have to, in general, in general, you have to be smoother on the controls. Uh, erratic input is going to cause erratic behavior from the car. Uh, when you jerk the gas off, that could even be too extreme when you slam the gas on or the brakes, even in cars with a lot of control. So even if you have a lot of traction control, a lot of ABS, in the rain, it's still going to be problematic. Snow next month. <laughs> All right, we're going to get our next time into the bus stop. Let's stay out of that rooster tail. Let's be mindful of puddles. Let's make sure we see our braking marks, even if we have to brake early. And then let's just really make sure we've slowed that, that corner, same thing. Whoa, we're going around. We're going around. Yeehaw. All right, so we hit that infield. We cut that corner and our car hydroplaned and pushed us 10 meters into the corner. Bring extra socks. <laughs> so right there, that was going to fall under puddle avoidance. And that's so the, so the thing that you're really trying to do is trying to learn the track in a different light. It is not the same track. So I know Daytona like the back of my hand. I know the driving line in a GT3 car very well. But you can see right there attacking the bus stop at the same angle. The same driving line was not going to work. Same thing here. Last time we went really far to the outside, close to the normal driving line, and found there to be almost no grip and a lot of puddles to slide out on. This time I went to the inside, and despite having to hold that inside driving line, like you, you know, just like if somebody's holding you down low, you're going to have to brake a little bit early. Same thing there. I went to the inside. So you're looking to avoid puddles because puddles are the biggest enemy you're going to find. It's not the wet track. These tires are doing fairly well on the wet track until we hit a puddle. And then we just go wide. 
and you'll often find that it's the inside line like if somebody was passing you on the outside is where you'll find comfort and freedom of the puddles a lot of times now that's just the standing water that we're talking about on the track oh that was a bad puddle to hit there by the way, anybody wants to join us in this weather, we're in a hosted section hosted by Andrew White. We are at Daytona in the GT3 cars. And the password is Simpit Fun, and there's still 33 minutes left in the session. All right. So this time I'm going to break a little earlier. And I'm going to try to not get down to that curbing. That curbing is the danger zone. We're going to try to get through there without hitting it. There. Oh, but we got that one. A little slippery in a cut. Cuts probably won't be a problem being that we're running so slow. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about things that are slippery in the rain more slippery than normal obviously standing water is gonna be a problem i can't see shit <laughs> uh the other is any and every painted surface is going to be slippery whether there's a puddle there or not so you really have to watch oh 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 we're hot we're hot we're hot we're hot So right through here, let's see. See these curbs here? Now, curbs are going to be an interesting thing when we talk about rain. Curbs can be good because they uh, can sometimes be elevated, which means they're not in the water. Uh, curbs can give us the turn. So uh, if you use the curbing right on some cases, it'll actually pull you around the corner. And maybe in the dry, that might be more activation than we want. I'm not getting a good line there. Let's go to the inside here. We're doing that for puddle avoidance. Into that puddle a little bit. So curbing in puddles obviously is going to be super slippery. Uh, curbing that is smooth, smooth and painted is likely to be slippery. But if it's got like those bumpy grips on it, if it's elevated, it's out of the water. Uh, that can totally be your friend. So you got to look at painted surfaces like curbing as 50-50. Now, if you think of about a track like Catalonia, a track that has, or most tilky tracks, uh, uh, Coda would be a prime example. When you think about tracks that have a lot of painted surface, I guarantee you all that painted area is going to be very slick and very much a nightmare. Wow, the bus stop is nearly impossible. All right, we're starting to get the feel for the car in the rain now. Yeah, just full rain tires, and I don't know how quick they wear if things dry out. I haven't done any testing on that. Um, the other thing I was thinking about, and I want we don't have any way of looking at the weather system, right? Because when I think about weather and racing, you know, nowadays, everybody's got a phone. You know, I can look at maps. Why did it give me another abnormal lap? It feels like you're just going so slow trying to go in the rain. Gotta watch those throttle inputs. Whoa! Okay, so we're on painted surfaces. Curbing <laughs> can be good, can be bad. Depends on the curbing itself. Um, we're talking about painted surfaces like at a tilky track. If it's flat and it's painted, you do not want to go anywhere near it in the rain or you will die. <laughs> or you're going to have a bad time. So that's the, the painted. Now, the other thing is a general concept. If you if you want to see one thing I'm actually doing a lot, another thing... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Scratch that. Let's go back one step, step. From painted surfaces sticking with just what's slippery. Now, ironically, on a worn-in track, typically... Here, I'm going to slow down for uh, Andrew. Let him catch up a little bit, and I'll get this point out. So on a normal worn-in track, the rubbered in area where you see that hard 
burned in driving line. Oh, he's waiting for me up ahead, it looks like. That rubber down area actually becomes extremely slippery. So on a dry day, the driving line will just call it. This is going to be a problem. Oh, oh, yep. We're going to get another off here. I'm just going to reset because I think it's, it wasn't timing my laps. Whoops. Um, okay, sorry about that. I'm going to finish this one thought that will go back on the track because it's gonna, I'll be able to show you what I'm doing to avoid this particular thing. So we've already noticed that on the right at apex, there tends to be, like on a normal driving day, at apex, a lot of times those spots are protected by a puddle that we don't want to drive through. So after we've done some recon laps, evaluating where the standing water on the track is, we can find those spots to avoid. So we've, we've seen a few, we're still finding a few more, like we, you know, and, and sorting that out as we spend more time on the track. <clears throat> we talked about the painted areas being super duper slippery. Uh, in general, curbing can be very slippery unless it's elevated or, or, or textured. If you have those bumps in it, that generally means you're going to get a little more grip even though it's a painted surface. But it, in general, paint means danger. And then we were talking about the rubbered in area. So the typical driving line, that rubbered in dark area on the track is going to be slippery when wet. So what that means, if you think about the normal driving line for a corner, we're going very much from the outside of the corner. And then depending on the radius of the corner and our a point, apex point, we are making that arc. And you will see that very burned in corner. So let's just take a normal, normal. Uh, great, Doug. Hey, Doug Hawley, speaking about names from the past. If you want to join us, there's 27 minutes left. Pending the, the strength of my ankle, we might do more. I don't know. Um, I really want to give you my tips on driving, but still 27 minutes. Uh, hosted section, hosted by Andrew White, Daytona, password is Simpit Fun. One word, all lowercase, no spaces. Okay, so the, the rubbered in area, and, and let's just take a normal corner and you're turning for apex, and you see that rubbered in area. Well, that's all going to be the danger zone. And I think the best way for me to describe as a generalization how to avoid that is is that you actually are going to want to run what I call the drag racing line. And by that I mean, instead of focusing on these perfect arcs for the corners, you are actually, generally speaking, better off driving to the inside, because there's not going to be a rubbered-in area, and then literally crossing over that burned-in area for a wider, later exit. And what you're really trying to do is shorten the corner. So you like almost like doing a one at you're like going full speed when you can go straight you're going slow as you can possibly go to make the corner and getting through the corner as fast as you can so that you're straightened up and that you can go straight and fast again so i think of that as almost being like drag racing or or maybe like motocross where you're like going in and slamming it into the corner and then getting out right but we just don't have that slam it in where we're slowing down to the point of being delicate through the corner and avoiding the curbs, uh, avoiding, I'm sorry, the puddles, avoiding painted surfaces, avoiding the rubbered end track, and then using curbs when they can help us if they're textured or elevated. Uh, curbs can help you turn, you know, so if, if we're tr having trouble. So, and then before, because now I'm going I'm, to, let me just explain one more thing before I get back out on track. I know I'm a little all over the place trying to do it this way. Um, let's talk about our inputs and, uh, of our, our controls. Because it is so... Yeah, downforce, ABS, traction control, obviously, kick low, all of those things are going to be big, big help. Um, like, you almost couldn't put too much downforce on the car. So if we're going to get in, I'm not really covering setup today, and I'm just running a default setup with rain tires right now. Um, but yeah, I mean... In the rain, especially heavy water like we have here, you're going to want to... There will be no penalty for turning all of those things as high as they go. Uh, you're going to want full ABS, full traction control, full downforce across the board. Uh, this will not be an aerodynamics race. This will be a... Uh, it, it's... I don't care how long the race is. In the rain, it will be an endurance race in the same sense that uh, the last man standing could be the guy who wins. Uh, and that's true in real life, too. That's not just saying it uh, about sim racing. Um, so, so uh, anyway, I was getting into my final uh, controls. In general, you need to be gentle. Just think on a normal day, if you goose the throttle and you 
peel out the tires. You're going to get a lot of slide. You're going to lose control, maybe even spin out, uh, especially if you're doing this in the act of coming off the corner while you have the wheel turned and you're putting jacking uh, to the to the outside uh, rear wheel. At that moment, too much throttle, too rapid a throttle application will cause you to spin. In the rain, you're not even going to get that body weight transfer. When the rain, when you get on the gas, the car's not even going to dip back and give you that one good wheel that's trying to give you massive traction even. The car is going to stay on four wheels for the most part, you know, in terms of body weight. And, and without that rotation, your rear wheels aren't getting the weight to create the friction to get you the grip for a good launch. So you really have to be careful about rolling that gas on to maintain and or prevent wheel spin. It's more critical than ever because when things go wrong, they're going to happen very quickly and, and very violently. And then your reactions are going to be worsened by the fact that we're in the rain as well. Um, <clears throat> Unless you're in a unless you're in a fixed race, stupid eye racing locks out ABS and traction control. Eh, yeah. Well, there, there. This is such an incremental step up on the rain. You know, with, when you look at the amount of cars and what we're seeing on the windshield, what we're seeing on our visor, that kind of stuff. Um. So, uh, okay. So, when we're doing our controls, same thing goes with the braking. When you hit the brakes. You just aren't going to get the same transfer, which means your front wheels aren't going to get the same kind of grip. So you need to be a little more gentle in your application, which means you're going to have to brake earlier just for that alone, plus the fact that we're in the rain and braking distances are going to be increased. So, uh, so, and then, believe it or not, you know, I get away with some really erratic driving when it comes to steering wheel input in the dry. You cannot do the same thing. Generalization. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna retract from all these statements in a in a moment. Um, so, when when <laughs> you're steering input, you can't just be jerky. You can't be overcorrecting and doing a lot of slip and sliding because you're gonna have a lot of trouble staying with the fishtailing car in the rain compared to the dry. So you need to be much more smoother with your steering input, just like your pedal inputs in order to maintain good balance with the car because again it comes down to the way the weight transfer isn't happening the same as when we have full grip when you swerve the car with full grip the amount of weight transfer that happens increases the load on the tires increases the amount of grip and we get better without that transfer we're not getting the same load on the tires we're not getting uh the same amount of grip so we're just kind of sliding on top you're we're you know, and and it doesn't. Again, you have to be mellow. Now, with that said, uh, anti Calgary, I was doing that. I was showing that. I call it my dragster line. So, uh, you know, saying on the inside, off the rubber, is one of the absolute keys. Generalized keys. You always have to find the best li driving line for every corner. It's just a different track in the rain, but it's a generalization. Driving what I call the dragster. Drawing in the inside line, slowing it way, way down, hooking your turn as fast as you can and getting back on the gas. Same thing, shooting for that inside line off the, the driving line off the rubber. So, uh, and to finish my, my last thought, because I just want to make sure I got all these out really clearly. I just want to make sure I got my tips out to you really clearly so you guys heard them. Then we can get down to just driving and trying to apply those same things on track. Um, uh, now, with that said, about everything I just said about the, the smooth input, when we start to really get a handle on the car, we really start to get our braking zones down and the corner speeds right, the driving line figured out, and even though it will feel like you're driving at turtle speed, it is as fast as the day is going to provide, and you have to just you have to chalk that up as a win. When you get to that moment, and you start to get comfortable with it, you actually will get to the point that you start to push things a little bit. So mid-corner going on that inside line and you've slowed it down enough, but you're just not getting enough traction, not getting through that corner quite quick enough. At that moment, little blips of the throttle will help rotate the car. So while we've been trying to avoid it to prevent crash or spin, once we've obtained control we can use those excessive inputs 
to create a little more action when the car's not cooperating. So sometimes when you're actually through the corner and it's just not doing anything, at that moment it's okay to give it a little blip of a gas to see if you can get just a, a quick hint of extra rotation to finish up the corner quicker so that you can get back on the gas in a straight line. I hope that makes sense. But that's sort of like wet driving 201. Once you've mastered wet driving, which is mostly just coming to terms with how slow it is and being okay with that and knowing, hey, everyone's doing the same thing or they're crashing, <laughs> right? All right, I think those are all my tips. Any other ideas, any, anything you guys think I missed? Anything you guys know that I don't know? Any tricks that you've tried that have worked out well? Please share them in the chat so others can benefit from them as well because that's the whole point of today's show, really. All right, let's go out and track and see if we can put some of that to practice. <clears throat> there are still probably about 20 minutes left in our practice session. Here, I'll know. Uh, 18 minutes. If you would like to join us... Oh, Doug's... Okay, Doug's coming out as well. Cool. Uh, you can join us. We're in the hosted section, hosted room of Daytona, hosted by Andrew White. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much for hosting. And uh, you can join us. Password is SimpitFun, lowercase no spaces. SimpitFun. Hey, accountant. All right. Oh, yeah, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. All right. We're avoiding puddles at all costs. We're avoiding sl sl uh, flat painted surfaces. All right, Andrew's going to pull to the lead. I've had a little trouble here in this corner here because there's a really big puddle guarding the corner. And that's what happens. You get two wheels in it and you get lose traction. Now we're going to get back to this inside. I'm going really slow, you guys. I'm in no hurry. I'm trying to not hurt my car, right? See all the water build up? See how dark and slippery it looks out on that right side on the normal driving line? We're avoiding it. Now, that's a painted surface. In this corner, there's just water everywhere. And right at the transition, you can expect a puddle of water because it's right where all the water is coming down off that corner into that rut. Now we don't have to deal with the rooster tail. All right, so this corner has been real problematic in the rain. I'm going to break it to two and a half. And we want to come in late because we are avoiding that curb. And we came in a little too hot, so that wasn't good. That was the right line, but we were probably carrying about 10, 15 miles an hour too much speed. Hey, Doug Hawley, how you doing, buddy? Rain X. Yeah, we have a total Rain X. I can't hear him. <laughs> Alright, I mean, I found the inside is way better. Yeah, I can barely hear people over my car, though. Can't see shit. All right, we're going to go to the inside. There's Zug going to the inside as well. So, you know, it's always going to be an extra challenge when you're behind somebody. See that? I was doing a little flip of the gas there, just trying to get a little rotation out of it. Now, I'm going to try going right into the puddle, see how we do. Andrew did well with the wet grass. Billy Strange! Welcome to the stream. There was that puddle on the transition. Putting wax on the tires. <laughs> I gotta sort out this chicane, I tell you that. So we're going to break it to three. Whoa, whoa, that doesn't help. 
That doesn't help. <laughs> hey, we all got in on that. That was all me. It's all good. See that it, driving in the rain. Was it was it the rooster tails? Was it uh, locked up brakes? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love sight when I got in your spring song and I did see. Um, I also uh for those joining the stream late, I do want to make one really big correction from yesterday's stream. I commented several times yesterday about not feeling puddle hits in the force feedback my steering wheel. I think we just didn't have enough water. I think we were just kind of like, you know, it was raining, but it hadn't rained before. Oh, before we got there. And so we weren't really dealing with the kind of puddles that we're dealing with right now. I mean, the pedals right now are huge and the, they're causing hydroplaning and they are causing a force feedback, slow that slow down feel. There we go. We're going to that inside. I probably went a little too inside on the turn in there. Watch out for this puddle right here on the transfer because there's going to be a puddle there. It has to be. Hey, Rinky, Wrinkly. How you doing, buddy? Hopefully we won't get clobbered this time. All right, we're breaking at the three. I'm having a hard time seeing the corner. There we go. That's the line. That's the line for the bus stop at this condition. Whoa, woo! <laughs> Never run on poodles. Poodles are slippery for sure. Yeah, don't, don't worry about getting those downshifts in. Engine braking is going to be minimal. Way too slow into that corner and then we missed it i hate when i go too slow and then i stop braking hard because i know i broke way too early <laughs> it's being overly cautious but i'm trying to find the really good spots to put the car and get decent traction hey matt hartley how you doing Another thing you might want to try, I call it the Senna trick. You might want to try to, you know, if you're really good at rolling on the throttle, that's good. Andrew's doing really well for being chasing me in the rooster tails. <laughs> Should I mess with him? <laughs> that's another thing. Defensive driving, you can just ruin someone's day, right?
Come on. Uh, the Senna trick. So if you're really good at throttle roll on, that's that's great. But if you're not, you can try doing like a, a bunch of mini blips to get up to speed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Same thing. Now we're too slow. Now we're too slow. All right, let's try to pick up the pace a little bit. I've been really uh, protecting and conservative. Um, it was still a little laggy, I thought, but it was it was workable versus it was not workable. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I knew you couldn't hold that speed through there and that well, it was the line, it wasn't the speed. It was the line. That puddle that puddle is ruining the bus stop. There's a big fat puddle on that first apex that is a no-go. is all over me. He's flying in the rain. My UI is unstable. Indeed. Oh, into the into the dirt again. That corner's really tricky. Ah. Oh, I'm not getting shit for grip. <coughs> Wonder how much downforce. I need more downforce, I feel like. I wonder what setup he's on. I didn't do anything. I'm on default with uh, just rain tires added to the default set. <laughs> he can just why look at you can just see him blasted by the rain. Yeah. <laughs> I gave him inside again. Here he comes. We'll see. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got a cut there. Still fishtailing. <laughs> oh, a doctor. One turn. It's hard to follow the way to the bus stop. And there is no alternate line. slow too slow too slow and then I hit that puddle seems to be building a puddle there on apex on that corner now <laughs> it is louder <laughs> Hey, UP, how you doing? Long time no race.
boat races. There you go. I love it. Love it. There's only three minutes left in our sesh session. I'm going to guess that my ankle is nicely swelled up when I try to walk on it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Downshift blew it. I blew it in the downshift. Ah! All right, that's... Oh, I'm glad you said Tempest. I want to see one thing. I don't think we do have this ability. <laughs> I want to look at one thing. I My car was not... I So I... We don't have time to do any changes, but I want to know... traction controls at three ABS three yeah so we would I would I would change that um, if I were gonna go back out but we're out of time on this I would also wing angle three oh yeah yeah we could have doubled our wing that would have helped a lot um, may or may not have been using it to sit on the car yeah, I just right then I was looking at my setup and it's like, oh, I have a lot of traction control and ABS and wing that I could have added. But, but that wasn't really the point. I mean, honestly, me having an ill handling car uh, uh, kind of helped as far as make the point. So that's okay. Great job in the rain, Andrew. Um, Johnson or Evan Root. <laughs> Um, I just twisted it. Nothing, not a big deal. It's, it's getting better. Um, I, I don't even remember doing anything that severe, to be honest with you. I think it's just sort of a, uh, I'm surprised my leg age didn't give out sooner thing. than work. Yeah, for me, it's my ankle. <laughs> Maybe ankle is good. For my, le my left leg has been bothering me lately for whatever reason. That never helps with driving. All right, so so I just want to really quickly put it in a nutshell and give you guys a chance to uh, interject your own uh, thoughts and opinions. <laughs> Real quick, main things when it comes to driving in the rain. Reconning the track, finding where the standing water is. Puddles are your enemy. Puddles are going to stop your car. They're going to hydroplane you. They're going to make you. They're going to cause all sorts of problems. They are the worst thing on the track is standing water puddles, which I definitely was feeling in heavy rain here. Uh, number two, watching out for slippery stuff. If it's a painted surface, it's going to be slippery. If it's a rubbered in surface, aka the normal driving line, it's going to be slippery. If you add standing water to that, it's going to be downright impossible. Now, with the, I want to add one caveat to that: the curbing. Sometimes curbing's painted. Sometimes curbing is the same height of the track, and it's and it's painted and it's smooth. That kind of curbing you do not want to touch. Treat that like any other painted surface. However. Some curbing is actually raised up. One of the problems we're having in wet conditions is getting the car to turn. Raised curbs with texture are going to be above the waterline, generally speaking, and they're actually going to help tug your car around the corner, creating more friction on that side. So you are going to. They also put more weight on the outside tires, giving you more grip. Weight transfer is one of the problems in the rain. You're not getting the weight transfer, which means you're not getting the Act, uh, added uh, uh, grip from weight transfer and extra load on those tires. S so we're avoiding... Um, yeah, Doug, I better call it there. I, my ankle gets really stiff on me and it screws me up, so I can only do so long. And I mean, I, I actually, I don't care. If, if you guys want to start another session, I can keep going a little bit, but... Um, no, that's okay. You just do what you gotta do, buddy. Copy that. Thanks, Doug. Um, so yeah, so so painted surfaces are going to be slippery. Flat painted curbs are going to be slippery. Textured raised, raised curves are going to be explorable. You want to see if they're going to help you around the corner. Uh, 
rubbered in is the same. The driving line, the typical driving line, rubbered in driving line is the same. Uh, so when my way of attacking it, if you noticed, was for the most part staying to the inside, going on into corners. So I would have a nice clean track for my braking in a straight line. I'm going to completely sacrifice going through the corner quickly. I could have added things like wing that would have helped, but you got to just get as much as you can get out of the car and then get it straightened up so you can get back on the gas. I call it the dragster line. Going as fast as you can, slow it down, do a 180 or whatever the degrees of the turn, and then get back on the gas again, almost like a motocross guy. Um, so, so that's that. Uh, and then the other is input. Smooth, smooth, smooth inputs. You don't want to be erratic. You're, when you get on the gas coming off the corner on a normal day, when you hit the gas, weight transfers going to the rear. We're getting added load to the tires. If you have a good setup, it's going to get you even more traction as you get on the gas. So even though the tires are trying to lunge forward under the power of the engine, you're getting that added grip that is really, really helping out. When you get on the gas and you don't get grip, you don't get the weight transfer. Therefore, the car is staying with a lot of weight still in the center of the middle of the car, and it's not giving you that added weight. So your application of the gas has to be so much smoother to keep the car solidly planted. The other thing is, if you get on the gas and you start to get a wiggle, and you go to start making corrections, because we're not getting weight transfer, everything starts getting really wild really, really f fast. So you want to avoid that. So same thing on the brakes. Uh, a overly aggressive application of the brake pedal is going to give you, even with ABS, you're going to get some brake lockup and you're just going to slide. When you're sliding, you're not slowing down this effectively. So you got to be really careful with your input. Same thing with the steering. If you really turn in really abruptly, you might cause the car to start getting a little too sideways because you have no grip going around when you... Go to turn, the car's not transferring to the outside tires, so we're not digging in like an ice skate and getting that traction that you need. So again, your turn in's gonna have to be smooth. And then my caveat to smooth input is that once you've nailed it, once you are starting to get comfortable with the grip of the car, the speed of the corners, you can then start using a little trickery. You can start using a little extra wheel input, maybe a little flick of the wheel might actually get the rear end to move when it wasn't moving, it was being stubborn. Maybe a little extra stab of the gas, just a real quick blip mid-corner, might actually get your car to rotate a little bit, allowing you to complete the corner quickly so that you can get on the gas sooner. But that can't be done until you've really gotten a certain amount of, of balance and, and comfort of what the car does under the normal conditions. So, so those are the ways to get a little bit extra out of it. Last thing I'm going to recommend before we bring this to the end, and again, any tips you guys might have, please throw them in now so that others can get the benefit of your wisdom and knowledge as well. Um, but the last thing is crank up that ABS, crank up that traction control, crank up that wing because none of those are going to work against you in the wet. In the dry, we could argue all day long about traction control and ABS and the proper level, and I'd argue it's very driver-dependent. Same thing with wings. Some guys can get away with very, very little wing because they have such great car control. Uh, in the rain, we're not going to get up to enough speed where the wing is what's slowing us down. It's the traction getting off the corner. It's the increased braking zones that are shortening the straightaways. So you're definitely going to want to get as much wing. Everything you can do to help that car get grip is going to help. That's the one thing we didn't do today in our testing. Yeah, drive slow. I mean... You saw what I was doing. I felt like it. It, it felt bad because I felt like I was crawling. But I was actually trying to get as much as I could get out of that car under those conditions. And without making setup changes, I felt like we were, we were right there. I was giving it my all. Any more, I was going to be spinning off the corners. Any more under braking, we were just going to be shooting off the ends and into the wall. Um, so you just got to be content with being a little slow. All right, so I did want to look at this. This is what I wanted to look at. I This is the one thing I haven't seen. So, now do we know what color is what? Uh, I'm guessing that green is better than yellow and pink is the most rain. <laughs> so, I, what I want to know is, do we get to so 
show radar pop out. Okay. <clears throat> now, is the rain moving? Can we see what the... Oh, static weather. Okay. I need to see this under changing weather. You're very welcome, Bucho. I hope it helps. I hope... I Let me know. I mean, if you get out there and try and anything I said helped you out, send me a message. Let me know it really helped. Put a comment on this video if, if it helped. I'd love to know that this video helped you in the wet. It is fun when you get the handle on it. It is different. You know, it's it's scary at times, many a times. It's uh, uh, fun and exciting often. And it, in some ways, will actually... You know, here's the other takeaway you can have from running in the wet. It's going to really teach you a lot of car control that you didn't have. It's going to increase your reflexes to a lot of things. It's going to teach you to be a lot more controlled in your braking. Same thing with your throttle application. And then when you, if you did a bunch of rain wet dry uh, driving and then went to the dry, all of a sudden you're going to be blown away by how much control you actually have over your own car. So there are advantages to it. Um, if you're feeling wet, Sean's your guy. Uh, I am. So after this test, I will say this. That did feel like driving in severe wet conditions. Uh, I have driven cars in those conditions. And it is tricky. And it is scary. And it is unpredictable. Um, and I, I felt like they did a, a pretty, pretty decent job. I, I got a lot of the proper effects. I got a lot of the proper handling attributes from the car at certain moments that I expected it to do certain things right and wrong. And, and it did. So I, I gotta say, yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty impressed with the GT3s in the rain at a track that I know the driving line. Yesterday in my testing, I didn't know, I didn't know Portimao or Algarve. So, so it's hard for me to like really push things and you know at the same level as testing it here today but we had even more water so it was a better test as far as overall anyway i hope you enjoyed this one uh we'll, we'll keep them going i don't know if you guys have noticed but we're trying to increase uh our streams when it comes to new content or new games or sims uh as well as keeping the the edited video review stuff going so it's just increasing everything Try to do more of that. Try to get a little more out on track testing things. So you can expect more of this in the not-too-distant future. And hopefully you enjoyed this one. So get out there and test yourself in the, in the weather. Uh, again, send me messages if you think of tips later. Maybe we'll do another wet show. Who knows? And uh, let me know anything you think or anything that you picked up and learned from this show. I'd appreciate that for sure. Be sure to uh, thumbs up if you like the show. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can find out when we go live or our next video comes out. And thank you for hanging out with me tonight. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole. And I'll see you on the track.